Hey guys, good evening to you all. Happy Sabbath. I am back this evening um, to share a message with you guys. It's coming from a dream that I had last night. Um, I knew immediately when I woke up uh, that the Lord wanted me to share this dream because he let me know. Um, <clears throat> it was a long dream, but it's only a portion of the dream that he wants me to share with you guys, okay? I don't know where to start with this message or anything today. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit just lead me. I feel you. I feel you, God. I feel you. Um, I, I've been having a wonderful day today. I pray that you guys have had a safe and enjoyable weekend um, so far uh, because the weekend hasn't ended yet. Uh, my day has been great. It's been raining all day. It's been cloudy, a little dark. Um heavy rain, light rain, windy, but it's still been a great day. My son and I had a uh, mother and son time today and we were in the rain. We were driving in the rain. We were doing things in the rain. Um, and we didn't allow the rain to stop our time together. We just really had such a wonderful time. Um, I had to first head to a whole nother city just to get his haircut. And then from there, we just got into a fun time. Um, and so I'm a little tired. Of course, I work really hard, as you all know. Um, and even when I have time off, I'm never really with time off. Um, I'm always busy doing something. And as a single parent, the load is kind of, it's a, it's a heavy load at times, right? Um, talking to all my single parents out there. So you guys know that, you know, sometimes we don't get all the rest that we we need sometimes we feel like we're just burned out a little you know and so when we take that rest we take it sometimes you just have to uh you have to take that break you have to take that rest when you're busy and you're doing so much right so i got out with my son i had a great time i'm home i could not just lay down um coming in because the lord was telling me when i walked in if you lay down you're not going to get this message done <clears throat> and this is somebody's message and I don't want them to miss it. Um, and of course I'm sitting on <laughs> way too many messages, more than I can, I, I can even count. Um, and I don't like that, but, um, it's like that sometimes. That's all I can say. Um, I just been it's been really wonderful today. Let me just say that. Let me it's just been great. Um and I thank God for it. I thank God for the life that he is giving me. Um I thank God for the ability to take care of my family. Um everything that he does for me, I give thanks for it. It's nothing that I don't ever uh, not thank God for it. And this is daily. I thank God every day for everything and everybody that he is blessed to be in my life. Um, mm, I feel your Holy Spirit. And it's just something so awesome about uh, giving God the praise that's due to him. Okay. Uh, most of you guys that know me know that I'm a worshiper. I love the Lord. Um, I love to praise God. I love to praise him. That's just, that's just the way I am. And a part of who I am, the way that God uh, works through me, and the I feel people deeply. I feel them in ways that I didn't know were even possible. I didn't even know that it was possible to feel people that way. So oftentimes when things are going on in the world or things are going on in people's lives, I tend to weep for people. I tend to cry out for them. Uh, and then at times I cry for myself and I want you guys to know that there is nothing, um, bad about you crying out, um, uh, for others, weeping for others. Uh, there's nothing wrong with you showing, uh, some emotion like that. Don't let people tell you, um, that it's a bad thing to show emotion. Okay. Uh, just because they are hard to the core and they don't show any emotion and that's who they are. That's who they are. 
Maybe God didn't call them to be a weeping prophet. Maybe God didn't call them to show that type of emotion. That's their business, okay? Don't concern yourself with uh, the opinions of people who probably are the same people who sit back and watch you guys daily, critiquing and criticizing you for years, but never step up to offer a hand. These are those very people, okay? And you have to remember that and I don't know why God has me off on this tangent, but you have to remember who you're working for. Okay. You're working for God. Okay. And when you're working for him, you're going to move the way he wants for you to move. You're going to move at the flow of the Holy spirit. Okay. And the way that he uses you may not be the way that he uses somebody else. He may use another person to be extra hard you know, and they don't show any signs of emotion or anything like that. That's their business. It has nothing to do with you. Okay. So you just stay committed and focused to God, um, with what he's given you to do, what he has given you the grace to share. You stay committed to that. Okay. Um, and stay true to yourself, be authentic, Stay true to who you are. You ain't, God ain't never called you down here to be nobody but yourself. Nobody but yourself. He never asked you to jump in nobody else's skin. Okay. You are special just the way that God created you and whichever way he chooses and desires to use you, let him use you that way because you are called to who you are called to help. That's who you're called to. Okay. And somebody else is called to who they are called to help. Okay. Everybody has something that they add to this. Okay. And you can't help somebody by being somebody else. So you might as well be yourself. Now, I don't know what in the world that come from. I, I just, it was something the Lord wanted me to say. So there you go. You might as well just be yourself. Um, I had an 18 year old today. I was checking my messages and I spoke about this on my Facebook channel and, um, I just had, I just, I just, I don't know. It's just something about younger people that do it for me. Um, I've had older people tell me I've helped them too. Don't get me wrong. But um, listening to some of the things and testimonies, I've had people email me about certain things. I've had people in my inbox about certain things. Uh, some people were getting ready to delete themselves. Some people had done some crazy, really crazy acts that they were just, seeking forgiveness and needed to be prayed prayed for and uh brought through certain things and what really keeps me going and what I do is those people when they say that you know you've helped you've helped me it lets me know that I'm on track okay it lets me know that I am on track and I believe the Lord is strategic I believe he does that he puts he puts me on other people's spirits, just like he puts other people on my spirit. He does the same thing with me. And there are things that we all need. Okay. And maybe at that moment, I just believe I needed to see something that this young lady wrote. And, um, I was out and I just was drawn. I just was went, went to tears, went to tears. I just, you just, You can't stop. You can't stop when people are being helped. Just put it, let me put it that way. You can't stop. It doesn't matter how hard it gets. You just have to push. You have to push through. You have to push through it because if God, uh, if it were not meant for you to be doing what you're doing, you wouldn't have not have gone through and experienced so much warfare and so many attacks like you do. Some people don't go through that same level of spiritual warfare and type of attacks that a lot of us go through because they may not be called to the same level of things that God has called us to. Okay. But some of us have, you know, we've, we've gone through, we've gone through and it's not been easy, but you've gone through for a reason you've gone through. Um, I've had one of the best teachers in life um, to teach me about these things that I didn't understand. And it was Jesus himself, greatest teacher alive, greatest teacher alive. Um, 
to come to me and teach me things I had absolutely no understanding of. And some of the things I didn't get an understanding of until I actually experienced those things. And once you experience those things, then now you have information. You have an understanding on what you need to do, what doesn't work and what does work when you encounter uh, certain types of attacks during spiritual warfare, okay? Because these attacks can be very um, gruesome and very serious, okay? But you learn, you, you're learning. So some things I believe, you know, the Lord allows to because he needs for us to learn. You know, it's really rough out here, guys. It's really uh, dark. There's a lot of evil out here. And sometimes you have to, it's a way you have to be prepared for this stuff. You have to be prepared for it. And um, so God will allow certain things because there are lessons in those things and he's training and teaching us. So certain things will be allowed. You'll be feeling like, why do I got to keep going? Why do Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's like that. But you just got to thank God that, you know, in all of this, in everything you experience and go through, that he's there for you. He's not going to leave you. He's there for you. Um, so let's see. I think I'm going to get into the scripture really quick. I'm feeling glad before I do the dream. The scripture is coming out of Acts 16. You'll see why I'm even in the scripture in, um, in a moment. Uh, Acts 16, beginning from <coughs> uh, verse 16. And we're going to stop at verse 21. And this is about Paul and Silas in prison. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her own for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. I'm sorry, guys, it's longer. Going on down. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, severely flogged, they were thrown into the prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone in chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Uh, he's telling me to keep reading. The jailer called for lights rushed in and fell trembling. I feel you, Holy Spirit. Before Paul and Silas, he then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. 
Now, that's where I'm going to stop at. I, I'm stopping at verse 34. And again, that was Acts 16. You guys can go back and read it for yourselves, the, in, um, the whole entire thing, if you like. Uh, I was at verse 16 and I ended at, what did I say, guys? Um, verses, verse 34. So, this is what the Lord wants you guys to understand. A lot of you guys are under heavy attack because you are um, bringing freedom to people. A lot of us are bringing freedom and deliverance to people. Okay, and we know that when people feel like their money is going to be threatened or when they feel like they're going to lose something, some type of control over others, they begin to look at other at those people who God has anointed and you and he's using and they know that God is God's hand is upon them. They feel threatened by those individuals, which is why they go on and they do this uh, lots of evil acts against us. Like the Lord was speaking to me again yesterday about the uh, witchcraft and the voodoo, the uh, love uh, spell work, um, the hoodoo, the evil that these people do. And a lot of times you think, okay, well, this is because they're jealous. And yes, people are jealous. That is the reason as to why they're doing it. But most times too, it's because they want um, the attention on them. They want the money. They want people to uh, see them as being uh, such this wonderful person, okay? That they feel like in order to be seen this way, they have to steal, kill, and destroy. They have to rob people of what is theirs in order for other people to praise them. Okay. Um, so it's a lot of things that are going on with this. Okay. Um, the young girl in here that she was no longer, she could not make a profit for these people any longer. Okay. So they became mad at Paul and Silas and threw them in chains, threw them in jail behind that because she took away their, you know, their, their, their finances, whatever power or control they had from using this girl, it was taken away once she got delivered. And that's what the enemy doesn't want, uh, is a mass deliverance to happen in our world, in our earth. This is why he uses people, the spirits that are in these people, he uses them to come after a lot of us in order to silence us so that they, cause he knows that if these people get a hold of a lot of us, they're going to actually, actually return back to God. Some people who were serving him, they're actually going to return back. They're going to be free. They're going to be delivered. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into, um, this dream that I had. God, you are so good. You're so good. The Lord is saying to me, I, I know I was already here, but he is saying to me to tell you guys, do not pay uh, your naysayers, uh, the people that are slandering you and that are mistreating you. Don't pay them any attention because he's going to deal with them. I don't know who this is for, but he's going to deal with them. You have to understand that there are some people and I've, and I've, I've got a couple of videos on my page somewhere about this. And I talk about this. There are some people that you can actually touch and it will anger God. It will anger him. Okay. I'm not talking about people who are out here that are doing wickedness against people and they're hollering, touch not my anointed because they want to keep hiding their evil and their wickedness. I'm talking about people who are really pure. They're authentic. They're genuine in spirit. They are God's friend for real. Okay. There are some people who will, you know, feel as though they can just go out and just touch you guys. And they're making a grave mistake. A grave. Only thing you could do is pray that they back up and that they realize that they're not God. They need to back up, go and do what they need to do for God and leave certain one of us, certain ones of us completely alone. They just need to leave us alone altogether. Um, now let's get into this dream. Okay. So in this dream, um, there was a lot of rain that was happening and the rain was really, really heavy coming down very hard. And I was looking out the window and I saw that the skies were turning very gray, not dark black, but just like a dark gray. And the rain was coming down and it was coming very hard. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this is a lot of rain. And we were living in high rise buildings. And I was like, what are we doing in a high rise building? Because where I live now is not a high rise building, but this was like high. This was a high rise building. 
and the water, the flood was coming up that building. And I was thinking, I was saying to myself in a dream, we didn't get any warnings. There were no warnings. There were no um, TV broadcasts. We didn't hear nothing through the uh, radio. We didn't hear nothing through social media. We didn't hear anything. The storm just popped up. And so I looked out the window and I kept saying, how are we going to get out of this? And the rain was rising. The, the water was rising. It was rising. <clears throat> so before you know it, my children were there with me, like just two of them and myself. And before I could say anything else, the water had entered into our building and it was pulling us up, like pulling us up to the ceiling or whatever. And I was thinking, oh, we got to get out of this. Are we going to be done? If we don't get out of this, we're going to be done. So the water was coming high, coming up very high. And my son looked very frantic, but my daughter looked worse. She looked like this was just too much. And mom, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, and, um, I closed my eyes at that moment. I closed my eyes and I started to pray and I was loud in this dream. The prayer was loud. When I say my voice carried, it was almost like it, the, my voice shook everything. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this storm. I rebuke this flood. I rebuke this everything going on, this wind, I rebuke it and I command you to stop in the name of Jesus. And the moment I said that, it disappeared. So now you know how when um, waters kind of, you know, they, 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 they're up that high, they, they, they say it's going to take time for it to go down. It's going to take time for everything to go away. And then you see uh a result of a storm. You see the trees, the houses are destroyed, the cars are destroyed, mud is all over the place, water, the uh, your place is jacked up. If it's still standing, it's got all kinds of uh, water damage and all kinds of stuff. Well, as soon as I prayed, instantly it disappeared. It didn't have time to go. It, wherever it went, it was gone. It literally, like you had snapped your fingers and it was on and it was off. Like you cut on a light, you cut a light on and off, that's how quick it was. It was just done. And my son in a dream, he goes, oh my gosh, Ma, how you do that? <laughs> now in real life, my, oh, I feel you. I feel you, Lord. In real life, my son knows who his mama is. He knows mama don't play about prayer. They be coming home asking me to pray for stuff. They know I don't play about prayer. Um, and so we were laughing when I told him in the dream, we were cracking up because like, you know, I know why, why it stopped. I, I, I knew, I said, yeah, but in the dream, that's what you said. So, <laughs> so when I looked back out the window, the, everything was bright. It was like, almost like there was no storm that ever came through. Everything was bright. The grass was green. The, uh, the the inside of the apartment was clean. And it was almost like the the children went back to doing what they were doing. Like nothing ever happened. It was almost like it was just nothing. It was like nothing happened at all. And I got a call after that dream because I woke right after I saw that in the dream. I was looking out the window and I was just so thankful that the storm was over with. Uh, when I woke up. I spoke to somebody and they were saying that they were drowning in something. And I said, don't say that. I said, don't speak that you're drowning. And they giggled or chuckled at it. And I said, no, I was serious. I was serious about not speaking that. We don't speak that we're drowning. We don't speak that we're whatever. We got to speak the opposite of what we feel. And yes, we're all human. So certainly sometimes we say the wrong things, but we don't have to repent. And I ask God to forgive us for uh, speaking that way under pressure, because we all come up under pressure. Okay. Including myself. So when you know, you said something that was that you, you know, this is not, you're not looking to see the wrong results. You want to see the right results. You have to repent and ask God to help you to control your mouth and what you say, and that you speak the right thing concerning yourself. So what you speak, you want to actually see, you don't want to speak anything negative or opposite of what you want to see or you will continue to see the negative you'll continue to see the bad happening in that dream i commanded this stuff to stop when i said i was loud i was speaking in tongues i was praying um it was it shook it almost like the way it looked like it shook everything and it disappeared okay 
So a lot of you guys have to remember that you have authority through Christ. And this is what the devil is trying to weaken. He's trying to weaken our faith. He's trying to weaken our peace. He's trying to weaken our joy. And he feels as though if he keeps sending more people, more people our way to try to harm uh, and stop what it is that God is doing, we're just going to throw in a towel and give up. But we're not. We're not throwing in a towel. We're not giving up. This life was not meant for us to give up on it. It's meant for us to conquer, conquer it. It's meant for us to find what we're called to do. It's meant for us to find Jesus first and then find uh, who we are in Jesus and then find what we're called to do. And it's meant for us to conquer this life, okay, and be with Christ someday in eternity, okay? It's meant, we, we have to uh, go through warfare in this life we have to and we have to we have to win every time we have to win every single time okay we have to win in this warfare every time because if you give up and you lose in the warfare then you know it's who knows who knows what can happen at the, at the moment that you decide i'm just giving up I'm just giving up in all of this. I give up. I'm, you know, whatever that devil want me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going back into the streets. I think delete myself sounds better. I think this sounds better. I think that sounds better. If you give up and you don't use the authority that God gives you, the devil is going to overtake you. He's going to over, he's going to run you, run your entire life. Mm. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to run our entire lives in the ground. That's what he wants to do. So, um, I don't, I'm not sure what your storm is. It could be a storm, um, at school could be going through things at school. It could be a storm at home. Maybe it's a storm between you and a child. Maybe it's a storm between you and a spouse. Maybe it's a storm within yourself. Maybe it's a war going on within yourself. Maybe it's a storm with the, with your finances. Uh, maybe it's a storm just because, the things are going on in the world. It's kind of making you feel down and out and discouraged. The Lord says, speak to that thing. Speak to it. Declare what it is you want to see. If you want peace, speak peace. If you want joy, speak joy. If you need cash, speak that out. Speak. I declare cash is coming. Money is coming. Wealth is coming. Okay. Uh, whatever it is that it is that you need. I need peace in my marriage. I need peace in my home. I need peace with my kids, my children. Speak that until you actually start to see that thing line up with your words. Okay. And then I also need to say this. There are some people who are going through spiritual things that are not so good because of decisions that they have actually made. And then there are others who are going through spiritual war because of the things that God has called them to. I think, uh, We've all been on both sides of those coins in life, okay? So the way in which you deal with maybe going through the spiritual warfare because of the things that you have done is to seek forgiveness. Admit to certain things. Seek God's forgiveness and then stop what it is that you're doing that's putting you um, at odds with God. That's how you, oh my stomach, y'all forgive me. That's how you deal, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> forgive me guys uh and i'm not redoing this message again behind my growling stomach lord knows but um yeah so um seek the forgiveness that you need to seek be uh true to that uh whatever it is you have to the process you have to go through go through that okay and then that spiritual warfare for the stuff that you've done it'll be taken care of OK, over time, when God says, you know, I've dealt with you long enough on this, that type of stuff will cease. It will go away. And it doesn't mean you're not going to go through any spiritual warfare, because when you're walking with God and let's say you live in a clean life, you live in a repentant life, you're living a life as unto Christ. I'm not saying that you're perfect, but you're living that life and, you know, you're growing in uh, into his image. OK, and he knows that then you're going to be met with spiritual warfare throughout your life. It's just going to happen that way. Okay. The enemy doesn't want anybody free. He don't want you free. He don't want me free. He don't want nobody free. Okay. But remember, 
There's power in your words. What you don't speak, you don't see. Wow, God. <laughs> what you don't speak, you don't see. If you're speaking the opposite of what you want, then the opposite is going to show up. So what it is that you want to see, you speak that by faith. Speak to the storm in your life and tell it to cease. Tell it to stop. Tell it to move. Tell it to go away. Oh, God, that was good. Tell it to go away. Oh, I feel you, Holy Spirit. Oh, you're blowing through here. Um, God is good. God is good. Hold on, guys. <clears throat> God is good. Woo! Tonight, y'all, y'all got y'all need to give him praise. God is so good. Oh my God, he's good. Let's go ahead. He just gave me the scripture, Matthew 21 and 21. I'm reading from the King James Version. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Amen and amen. Guys, God is good. God is good. Listen, I pray that this has helped somebody this evening. Um, I'm so glad I got it done. I really, truly am. I have a love, a genuine heart for younger people and even uh, the older generations. Let's say 60 and up, most of them. Because we know not all people, it doesn't matter your age. You got wicked in every group of people, in every type of people and in every group of people around the world, don't matter the age, there's wickedness everywhere. Okay. But I have a genuine love for younger people. Um, and so when they tell me and express to me that something I've done has helped them, or they express to me that I was in their spirit, it lets me know that God is thinking about me and God loves me and God cares about me. And I want to tell you guys that God cares about you. He's thinking about you. He loves you. Okay. And the same way that God places people in my heart to pray for when God places someone in your heart to pray for, if it's me that he places in your heart to pray for, please, please do please pray for me because I'm always going to welcome, um, the prayers of the righteous. I'm always going to welcome that because we can't get through this life without praying for one another. Okay. We can't get to where we need to be without covering one another. Okay. Um, and so, yeah. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end out this message. My stomach is just going to do what it's going to do on the show out, but <laughs> I think I'm going to go give me something to eat real quick. I'm talking about taking a nap, but I don't know, guys, I might just do regular bedtime or a little earlier. Um, I love you guys with the love of Christ. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you guys for supporting me. I pray that you guys are having a wonderful new year. Uh, so far, um, keep it going. Keep, keep, keep everything going, uh, through releasing prayer, through releasing the proper sound in the earth. Keep, keep things going in a positive way. You know, when you see evil going on, that means you need to do something to kind of stop this evil from happening, to stop it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to stop this evil from happening. You are responsible. You see this evil happening. You see this evil taking place. The way you handle this is through prayer. This is how you handle this, okay? All right, guys, so I am gone now. Um, Take care of yourselves, all right? God bless. Bye.